Continuing with Freud's psychosexual stages of development, we're ready for stage two, which is the anal stage. Since it's named the anal stage, what do you think the erogenous zone might be? You'd be correct if you thought, ah, uh, sometimes students hesitate with what to say, what to call it. We're talking about the anus, the anal sphincter. The muscle that's involved with being able to hold it in when you've got to go to the bathroom and it's not a good time to go. So you have to contract those muscles and hold it in. All right, so where does the pleasure come in? All right, so according to Freud, they, it's an older toddler at this point, around age one and a half to three, uh, they gain considerable pleasure from defecating. And also, um, if you're familiar with toddlers at all, you may know that you have to wait until a certain point to toilet train them. Uh, you have to wait until it's possible for them to have to have enough control over those muscles uh, to be able to control their bowel movements, to be able to hold it in. And so eventually they learn about holding it in instead of just, you know, just letting loose. And so the erogenous zone is the anus and the conflict is toilet training. So as in civilized society, at some point, uh, parents are going to teach the child that they have to control their bowel movements, that they have to hold it in and wait till that they are at the potty or the toilet, and then they can let loose there and only there, and please no messes, please no accidents. And so again, you know, it's kind of up to the parents in terms of whether this conflict will be resolved successfully. Now, parents can either be too strict or harsh or punitive, or they can be too lax or lenient for toilet training. You know, some parents, they will uh, be very harsh. You know, they will be unforgiving when a child has an accident. And when children are toilet training, I don't know if you've ever gone through it, I've had to toilet train two children. It's not easy and there's they have lots of accidents even when they want to do it they want to please you they want to uh you know they, they want to go on the potty and they might you know they still lose control they have accidents they fail to control their defecation the theme of the anal stage is control <laughs> and so the child that has parents who are not uh who are not strict enough who are too lenient too lax they don't teach the child control, essentially. Now, remember that word fixation, well, that we talked about oral fixation. Well, you also have anal fixation, but anal fixation can take two forms. There are two types, and it kind of depends on which direction uh, the parents were in being not optimally controlled or not optimally encouraging control in their child. All right, so if the parents are too... Um, strict with toilet training, the child develops an anal retentive personality. You might have heard this term. Uh, I, I feel like it, it's used less than when I was younger. I, I remember adults insulting each other and being like, don't be anal retentive. Uh, and also some people would insult each other by calling each other anal. And then actually I, I've learned that some people, they just thought they were calling them anal because they, they, they were calling them a butt, essentially. Calling them a rear end, a derriere. Uh, but actually it's rooted in this term, anal retentive. So if you are anal retentive as an adult, your, your caregivers were too strict, too punitive, too harsh with toilet training. So you became very focused on control, that you are figuratively trying to hold in your bowel movements. And so you are very rule oriented. You are very strict with yourself, you know, very organized and neat, all right? It's sort of uptight, an uptight individual. Um, I'm just gonna check something real here. Yeah, all right, so uh, rule bound and inflexible. Now, what if your parents were too lenient? What if they just kind of let you have accidents? It wasn't a big deal. Control is not such a big deal. Then you grow up to have an anal expulsive personality. So what would an, <clears throat> what would an anal expulsive per personality look like? So you're not controlled enough. You're disorganized, sloppy, messy. Uh, yeah, as, as one, uh, one book I used at some point, they also said that you share with the world, like you share your poop with the world. Uh, but the idea is kind of slovenly on the other end, not 
not controlled, right? All right, so both of those are anal fixation, but you can go in two different directions. You can have anal retention and anal expulsion or the anal retentive personality versus the anal expulsive personality. So my students know the difference for the test. We do have more stages to go through, all right? So I'm, uh, uh, I don't know if every single stage is gonna get its own video, but the next stage, the phallic stage, it's definitely gonna get its own video and it might, might be on the long side.